How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and if you've ever wondered what the difference between Windows 10 Enterprise Edition and other versions like Windows 10 Pro are, that's what we're going to go over in this video. We're going to talk about some different features that are exclusive to Windows 10 Enterprise in case you were ever curious. Also, if you want to see the difference between Windows 10 Pro and Home, I also made another video about that. I'll probably put the link to pop up at the end of the video or up here somewhere that you can click on that. The first thing I should point out is there's actually at least two versions of Windows 10 Enterprise and those are E3 and E5. Not sure why they're called that and I don't believe there's an E1, 2, or 4, so don't know where that came from, but just so you know. And as far as I know, the only difference between E3 and E5 is that E5 has a feature called Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, which we will get into. I should also mention that it's not very easy to go out and buy an enterprise key. Now, you can technically do it. I did a bunch of research just to see if it was possible, and I was actually able to go through a Microsoft Partner reseller and get a Windows 10 Enterprise E5 subscription, because yes, Windows 10 Enterprise only comes as a subscription model. So I was able to do it, but it was kind of an involved process. You have to like create this Microsoft Azure directory and log in with this on your Windows computer and link it. it it's a bunch of nonsense. So believe me when I say, it's not as simple as going and buying a key, plugging it in, and then you have Enterprise. It's really not worth it unless you absolutely need one of the features that we're gonna talk about. And if you are curious, as for pricing, E3 costs $7 a month at least, and E5 costs at least $14 a month, but I believe if you go through a reseller, they're gonna mark that price up. Anyway, let's get into these features. The first is one that I did make a video about recently, and that is Windows LTSC, Long-Term Servicing Channel, and this is exclusive to Enterprise Editions, and I think it's actually its own kind of version of Enterprise, but basically it just means that instead of getting updates every six months or so, LTSC just gets one installation and it gets no feature updates, only security updates. So if you're running this on a system like a ATM or something where you don't want new features, you don't want anything to change, you would use this LTSC servicing channel. If you do wanna see the whole video I talked about that, I'll put the link and have it pop out up here or whatever so you can see more about that. All right, so anyway, the next feature is Windows to Go. And it basically allows you to create a full Windows installation on a portable USB drive. So you can go ahead and plug that into any computer and boot from the drive. And it's a full Windows 10 Enterprise Edition installation. You can use it like you normally would. Of course, it's probably going to be a little bit slower and it does make some changes. Like I don't think it actually by default gives you access to all the internal hard drives and stuff. So, you know, you're not going to interfere with it unless you specifically want to on the computer. So really it just lets you boot your installation of Windows or at least a version of it from anywhere. The next feature is Windows App Locker, which is pretty straightforward. It basically just allows you to restrict which users on the computer can use which applications. So this might be useful for businesses in a lot of different situations where maybe you're running a demo in a public kiosk or something and obviously you don't want people to exit out of the demo and using Windows regularly so you can have it only keep that one application up on the screen or obviously if you're running an office with a lot of different users you don't want them installing all sorts of random programs and installing viruses and stuff so you can have it only allow the installation of certain files and also of course run certain programs that might even be installed on all computers but you only want admins to be able to run certain software if they log in that sort of thing. Next up, we have a couple different things in the group policy editor. Now the group policy editor itself is available in Windows 10 Pro and almost all the options are usable in Windows 10 Pro, but there are a couple settings that are only usable in Windows 10 Enterprise. They're not really big deals, but they are a difference. The first is the ability to easily disable the Microsoft Consumer Experience, which is basically like all the bloatware that gets installed on Windows when you first boot it up and you know run installing the suggested apps and all that crap. Basically, you can disable that right through the group policy editor. 
but if you don't have Windows 10 Enterprise, I do believe there is a way to disable that through the registry. Of course, it's a little bit more involved, so it's just easier on Enterprise. Also on Enterprise, you have the ability through Group Policy Editor to disable the Microsoft Store altogether and disable the installing of apps through the Microsoft Store. So obviously you might wanna do that for the same reasons as you might wanna use AppLocker. You don't want people installing different apps or maybe you just hate the Microsoft Store and you don't want it running at all. Now, I do believe that these settings will still show up in Windows 10 Pro, but even if you enable them, it doesn't actually do anything unless you have enterprise running. So you might be able to set the settings, but I don't think they actually do anything. All right, moving on, we have a feature called Application Virtualization or AppV for short. Now this one's kind of interesting. Basically it lets you install different applications on a centrally run server or something for an organization and then kind of lets different users run that same program from the same instance on their local computers virtually. So it's basically like instead of having to install an application on every single computer or something, you can maybe install it once on a central server and then everyone can kind of access it from once and it'll look like it's running on the computer, but it isn't necessarily and it's kind of isolated from the actually installed programs on that device. So it's basically just a way to kind of have Pro, lots of programs that you can run, but without having to actually install them all together. At least that's the way I understand it. Another feature that's kind of related to that is environment virtualization. Although I think this might also be called user experience virtualization. I'm not sure if those two are exactly the same, but in any case, basically what this will allow you to do at least is take a user settings and store them centrally. So this will include application settings, Windows settings, all personal preferences and stuff. So you basically have this person using their main computer and then it kind of, as they use it, gets loaded into the central server. And then if they happen to go onto any other computer in the organization or building or whatever on that same domain, then once they log in, it'll look like they're using the same computer as their main one because it kind of loads all their preferences and applications and stuff from that central server. So I think that kind of ties in with the app virtualization where you know you log in on a computer you normally don't, but you can still access the apps because it's virtualized. All right, next up, we have a feature called direct access. And this you can kind of think of like a type of VPN, not exactly, but it's kind of related. So you might be familiar with VPNs that basically you connect to as a service and it just kind of changes your IP address. But another use of a VPN is it lets you connect to a remote network like your home network, for example, if you're away and it'll basically make your computer behave like it's on your home network and be able to access all your local devices at home and stuff. And it's kind of secure, it's kind of like tunneled in and then you can use your computer normally as if it were connected in your own house. So this is obviously useful for an organization where some people might need to work from home or whatever, but you want it to be secure. So you use a VPN to have them have a secure tunnel into the network and then everything else outside is kind of isolated in like a bubble, but they're still able to connect to it. Anyway, what direct access does is instead of having to manually log into the VPN or whatever like you normally would on a computer. So typically you'd, you know, boot up Windows, whatever, and then it would be connected to the internet like it normally would. And then you log into the VPN and then it's connected to the network. This removes that requirement and basically allows you to just upon boot up of the computer, it will automatically log in to the network. So it basically is like a VPN that acts instantly. So it's never not connected to the VPN, if that makes sense. You don't have to manually connect to it. And I believe if it disconnects, you can have it so it doesn't connect to anything at all. Now, the next feature is called Branch Cache. And this one is mostly for organizations, kind of like the last one that have multiple locations. So say you have a company with a headquarters and a remote branch, like a mini office or whatever, and the mini office needs to access most of the files on the headquarters all the time, like everything's stored at the headquarters, but people working at the office obviously still need to be able to access that. What happens is instead of making it so every time someone at the office wants to connect to a file that's at the headquarters, instead of having every person need to download it every single time they want to access it, with branch cache, it basically creates a cache, obviously, where 
The first time someone accesses that file, it keeps a copy at the office location. So the next time that person or another person needs to access that file, it'll just access it locally instead of having to go over the internet to the other main headquarters. So basically just a way to save bandwidth. And obviously if it updates, it'll update the cache. All right, now finally, we have Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection or ATP. And like I said before, as far as I know, this is the only difference between Windows Enterprise E3 and E5. And what Windows Defender ATP does is basically just makes it a lot easier to manage the security of a lot of different computers in an organization. You basically go in, you get a report of how many computers are being used. You can see if there's any threats detected on each of them. It allows you to basically isolate that computer if you needed to, for example. It can force you to run a virus scan on any computer. It'll give you updates about that computer. I'm not necessarily sure if the virus protection is any better than standard Windows Defender. I don't know why they would have an inferior version on other versions of Windows. I think as far as I can tell, looking at the reports, it basically just gives you better access for managing it, which kind of makes sense if it's an enterprise feature, but I don't think to get the best you know, Windows defense, you need to use enterprise. It should work just as normally. And if you are just one person, this is a bit overkill because then you can just manage it yourself. And I believe that's it. Those are pretty much the only main features that are available on Windows 10 Enterprise that you can't get on any other version. So unless you needed some of these, then you definitely do not need to go through the trouble of getting Windows 10 Enterprise. I think it's definitely overkill. So hopefully that clears things up. Let us know down in the comments whether you're happy with Windows 10 Pro, if you for some reason still really want Windows 10 Enterprise or whatever. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here, including the one about Windows LTSC and also the difference between Windows 10 Home and Pro if you wanna watch that too. If you wanna subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.